Peace be with you. My name is Alan Kiesler. Although I'm in the United States, I'm always thinking about Pakistan. Because Pakistan is not an ordinary place, but is that pure land where, God willing, pure-hearted, sincere people will gather and reestablish pure Islam. Pure Islam means love, truth, justice, morality, and always serving one another and praising God, especially by zikr. <laughs> and, as we have been discussing for the last many weeks, establishing self-sufficient communities. So I have been thinking recently, I had some doubts, I guess I can say honestly, why am I stressing so much this date of 2023 and that we must have self-sufficient village communities by then? And people complain sometimes. Uh, quite a few people have objected. Uh, why you say 2023, that's only two years from now. It's not enough time to establish all these self-sufficient village communities. That's one objection people have raised. And I've also been thinking this is like a warning, uh, it's like threatening even, that you better get together and establish these self-sufficient village communities or else something bad will happen and that's not so kind and loving. I should encourage people but not threaten them. That's what I was feeling. So as I was preparing just a few minutes ago for this live chat today, because I'm not working today, so it can be a little bit longer than it's been the last few days when I've been working. I prayed for guidance, and I heard in my heart the message, just read the Holy Quran. <laughs> so I picked up the Quran and randomly opened it with prayer. I often do this. And I often get very good guidance, so it's become my regular practice, I can say, when I'm in difficulty and confused or want some, need some guidance, I pray and I take a holy book and read it, and I always get some good guidance. So I opened just now to Surah 15, and uh, that is Al-Hijr the rocky tract, and uh, I opened to page 165, and this is the <laughs> translation of the Holy Quran that I use by Abdullah Yusuf Ali, and uh, <clears throat> my eyes fell upon, or I was told to just look at text 74, and that place on the page, and this is what it reads. <laughs> I uh, am hesitant to read it because it's just the opposite of what I was thinking. And it is, And we turned the cities upside down and rained down on them brimstones hard as baked clay. <laughs> so I was thinking I should not be so harsh and judgmental and giving such warnings about the cities when I'm mentioning that we should start self-sufficient village communities, I was really thinking this way. I was thinking that I'm being too harsh and I'm uh, warning people about the cities as if I'm threatening them. You'd better get out of the cities and get to the village. Uh, and I was feeling uneasy about that. I was feeling uncomfortable about speaking so strongly uh, in that way or feeling this is not good for me to feel strongly. I should encourage people to establish these village communities because they are very good. It's very good for spiritual life to live in the countryside generally, and it's very wonderful to grow your own food, as I'm doing to some extent. We have our potatoes and chard and other greens and different vegetables that we're growing, so it's wonderful to plant a seed or a uh, root or something and 
for it to grow. It's a wonderful spiritual experience, really. So living in a farming community or doing farming wherever you are is wonderful spiritually. So I thought I should encourage people like that and not threaten them so much about the cities. But then, <laughs> this is the verse that I opened to randomly. I just prayed and opened the Holy Quran, and this is the place that my eyes fell upon, I was directed to. <clears throat> so I'm going to read it one more time. And we turned the cities upside down and rained down on them brimstones hard as baked clay. So, of course, this is talking about the story of Abraham's son-in-law, his relative Lot, Lut in the Quran, in Arabic, and how the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, were destroyed, <coughs> and their cities were annihilated. So, <laughs> this is not what I was <laughs> wanting or expecting or feeling, but this is what I was told. This is what I opened the Holy Quran to, so I think I do need to not decrease the warning, but increase it, not try to just encourage people to go to the villages for spiritual life benefit, uh, but also because the cities will be destroyed. The cities will become uninhabitable. <coughs> so, I'm sorry to say that, actually. I feel uncomfortable, but this is where I've been guided to. So I'm going to have to repeat this message that uh, it's better to get out of the cities. Um, <coughs> it's better to, even if you're living in the cities, at least immediately began making plans for establishing a village community where you can live comfortably, safely, without needing anything from outside. So if, <laughs> by whatever means, the cities become uninhabitable, you will be able to go there uh, with your family or, or friends or relatives and live comfortably, even though uh, something may happen that will make cities uninhabitable. Uh, I guess that's all I need to say. <laughs> this is not at all what I was thinking I would be saying. I was thinking I would say just the opposite, that I don't want to threaten you. But I just want you to be encouraged to move uh, or at least establish a village community where you can live comfortably, growing everything that you need, having all your necessities like clothing also, and whatever for your life you can get, grow and produce in the village. Um, and I was not going to, I specifically was not going to give this threat and warning about the cities, but then look at the verse that the Holy Quran uh, showed to me, I guess I can say. Okay, let's see <coughs> what comments or questions we may have. Majid Khan says, Durud Ibrahimi Noor hai. Oh, yes, very true. I love <laughs> Durud Sharif Ibrahimi. <coughs> Muhammad Hamza says, the next day when you will do live chat, it will be the date on which Prophet Muhammad met Allah with physical body of human. Do I will advise you to talk about that thing in next chat? Love you. Uh, <coughs> Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, okay, unfortunately tomorrow I will be teaching, so I will have to have a very, very short chat. But um, <coughs> maybe I will talk briefly about the uh, Miraj, the ascension of the Holy Prophet Muhammad to heaven and in meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, okay, tomorrow I will talk about that briefly. So, Chaudhri Abdur. Akram says, how are you, sir? I am fine, thank you. I'm very happy. <laughs> I was kind of astonished about the verse that came up today, which actually shocked me uh, because it was so contrary to what I was wanting to say and planning to say. But uh, other than that, I'm very happy. <laughs> but I guess that doesn't make me too unhappy. It makes me, just confirms for me that what I was doing was right. <clears throat> and I was doubting whether I should emphasize that so much. But it looks like the Holy Quran has, has confirmed that, yes, I should warn people 
you do need to prepare to get out of the cities and move to the country and at least have a village in your district where you can go if the cities do become uninhabitable, where you can live comfortably and safely uh, with your friends and family members, uh, where you can grow your own food uh, without requiring anything from outside. <coughs> Amata Muhammad says, Assalamu alaikum ji, aap, aaj aapke pehen maraj saraf hai, asifi basaf ke le khas dua kare. Achha. Hamara maraj sharif aaj hai. Achha. <laughs> Hamza Muhammad Sahib نے بتایا کل ہے تو شاید پاکستان میں کل ہے یہاں آج ہے آپ کہہ رہے ہیں لیکن ہم میں کل اس کے بارے میں کچھ بات کروں گا انشاءاللہ Rahila Abasi says love this Quran guides us in all aspects like a miracle yes it really does not only holy Quran holy Bible all holy books I've used in this way uh, and gotten wonderful guidance just by praying more, very important to be very, very prayerful and sincere and beg for guidance humbly and then prayerfully, randomly opening the book and there's very good guidance everywhere, of course, but that verse often is exactly appropriate. In fact, in the Sikh community, they do this regularly with from the Guru Granth Sahib and uh, it's taken that the whole community gathers in the Gurudwara and they pray, a specific prayer, actually. And uh, then they prayerfully open the holy book randomly, and then they read a verse, and they take that as the guidance of God or the guidance of Guru for that day or that time. So it's a very miraculous. Uh, but we have to be sincere. If we are sincere and prayerful, then we will get good guidance that way, yeah. Muhammad Amsa says, two more Sufis have said that there will be war. Well, I know many people are saying there will be war, and maybe there will be war, but I have been told, or at least it was in the past, like 1984, and again in 1999, there was going to be a war, a nuclear war, and uh, it was prevented by the mercy of God. So um, I was led to understand then that like a worldwide nuclear holocaust, which was the part which was part of the destiny of humanity, that has been changed, and there will not be that war which was destined. So maybe there will be, and certainly there are now so many small wars going on, uh, and maybe there will be some war. But what I've been told and what I've understood is that that big nuclear war that everyone was and many people still are expecting, that that has been canceled by God's mercy. I am told that something will happen and the cities will become, uh, I'll just say, uninhabitable. It will be chaotic. So it's better now to prepare. We have been given evidently two years to prepare. Uh, so we should be thankful for that. <laughs> the residents of Sodom and Gomorrah did not get two years warning. <laughs> they got a little warning, but they didn't listen and they were all destroyed. So. Let us be very, very prayerful and beg God for guidance how we can uh, fulfill this warning, act properly in response to this warning, and uh, immediately start praying, meeting people, talking with our friends and relatives about establishing totally self-sufficient village communities. Okay... Ahmad Shah says, is this message for the whole of the world or any particular countries? The village idea is for the whole world. Um, but it's especially for Pakistan because I understand Pakistan will be the leader of the world, the spiritual leader, uh, the establisher of pure Islam uh, will be Pakistan, inshallah. And also two other places, <laughs> southeastern United States and uh, Palestine, Israel, Jerusalem area, those three places. Uh, will be where pure Islam will be reestablished or pure love between people of different religions will be, because pure Islam means love. So love between people of different religions, and uh, I guess it also means establishing self-sufficient village communities will happen in these three areas, but especially 
uh, I am focusing at least on Pakistan. So, but definitely the whole world. I can't imagine that the cities in Pakistan would be destroyed, but not the cities in the rest of the world. So, and I think it may be not a war, but a solar flash or solar flare or a combination of astronomical phenomena. It, there may be a pole shift on Earth, which will greatly reduce the magnetic field and a lot of, what should we say, radiation from the sun uh, will maybe destroy all of the electronic equipment we have. All of the transistors will be fried. So even solar panels will be un inoperable. So we have to live a very, very simple life in the villages that we are establishing. Um, so definitely it would cover the whole world, I believe. <laughs> I may be wrong, but that's my understanding. Aisha Khan says, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Please pray for me and my family. Thanks. I will pray that you will wake up. Don't sleep anymore. Wake up. Realize you must establish a village community where you grow your own food and your own clothing and have your village cottage industries where you can uh, make thread and weave cloth and, and where you can... Uh, produce, you have to have a blacksmith who can produce the simple implements that you need for farming. And uh, you must have, uh, of course, food grown there. So an arrangement must be for water without electric pumping. So please, this is my prayer for your family. Don't. I always tell people, be careful when you ask me to pray for you, because I may not pray for what you want. So you made a mistake if you didn't want this. I am praying that you will wake up and realize you must establish a village community where you grow your own food and you have your own, all your necessities produced in the village itself. That's my prayer for you. I don't have any other prayer for you. Wake up to the essential message to get out of the cities and create villages where you can be totally self-sufficient. Okay, Aisha Khan, and also pray for my parents. Thanks. Okay, so uh, this is the end, Aisha Khan. I'm not going to pray for anything else. I'm praying that you and your family and your parents will wake up and realize what the Holy Quran has warned us today. Uh, what is that? Verse 74. And we turned the cities upside down and rained down on them brimstones hard as baked clay. This is not my tendency. This is not my nature. I was feeling uneasy about this. But the Quran is giving very clear, strong warning. Get out of the cities. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah. They were warned, get out. And Lot left with his family. And except for his wife, who turned back and looked and <laughs> didn't make it, everyone else in his family got away because they left the cities. So um, it's difficult. It's a hard line. It's a warning. But I'm praying that Aisha Khanji, you will wake up, and your parents and your whole family will wake up and get out of wherever city you're living in. And... Uh, you have some time, so don't get scared, but go right now, immediately, talk with your parents, tell them that Alan Kiesler is warning us we're going to have to get out of the cities, we're going to have to establish a village, self-sufficient village community. That's my prayer for you. Muhammad Hums also pray for me. I'm praying the same thing. Wake up, get intelligent, don't be lazy. Prayer for spiritual success? No, I won't pray for your spiritual success. I will only pray that you do zikr. <laughs> And that you work very, very hard, very diligently, very intelligently, very sincerely to establish self-sufficient village communities. I'm praying that God will give you the intelligence to do that. Okay, I think this is a very simple message today. There's no need for going on anymore. I'm just going to read this verse one more time. This is, I take things this way. This is a direct message from the Holy Quran, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us today, right now. Uh, and we turned the cities upside down and rained down on them brimstones hard as baked clay. So immediately start getting together, talking with your friends and relatives about establishing a self-sufficient village community. If you're in the city and you can't get out immediately, uh, then that's okay. You can stay there. It looks like we've been given two years warning. So, uh, But immediately start preparing go out into the countryside, either find a village already existing where you can talk with the people and convince them to start doing uh, 
farming that is sustainable uh, without any electrici electricity or gasoline, petrol. Um, so please do that. That's what I'll pray for you, that you will do that. <laughs> uh, and boy, it's scary. It's frightening. But the, the Quran has frightening warnings in it, and they're good warnings. They're warnings to help us. So this is real. If you want me to pray for your spiritual success, I will pray that you will become successful in establishing a self-sufficient village community. That is a spiritual duty. It's not just something material. Don't take it as material. Take it as a spiritual order from the Holy Quran, Sharif itself, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. <laughs> okay, thank you all very much. May God protect us all. Allah.